Hey guys, um, just here to do a review on Operation Barbarossa, or maybe a first turn gameplay. Um, you don't know me, but I'm Rolf. I've been on the Board Game Geek for a while now, and I just thought I'd have to really, you know, show somebody this great game. Uh, Charles is here with me. He's been on Board Game Geek quite a bit, but I'm just going to let you know that this is an awesome game. Operation Barbarossa by Vezda Games. It's actually a miniatures game, as you can see, by the little guys here and the uh, armor and guns on the table. Um, what basically this game is, is it's a simultaneous type of turn play. What that means is you have cards. And I don't know if you can really see these cards well, but as you can see, this is the front of the card. It basically tells the abilities, keeps track of the damage, um, has other stats that you would also use during the game. And on the back of the card is orders. And this is where the game gets really good. These orders here... You get one order per turn, and you would pick an order from any one of these symbols. Now, obviously, the symbols you'd have to learn. That's, the, that's really the heart of the game, learning the symbols. A little bit of a learning curve because of that, but these symbols mean everything in the game. And I'll show you another card just so you see. This was the truck, and that would be this guy right here. All right, Limited in what it can do, but it can pick up people, it can drop off people, it can pick up weapons, transport them, drop them off, as well as give you new supplies. Because if you look here on this card, there's a bar at the bottom with little bullets, and each section is one ammo point. You only have so many ammo points. In this case, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ammo points, and you use them as you fire. Suppressive fire even uses more. It uses three points at a time. So that's why the truck comes in handy, because as you go down in your ammo level, the truck comes and resupplies. And as you can see, the truck has a lot of supply as far as ammo points. But it can run out as well. So next thing is, each one of these, um, if you can look at the top here, these are the hex ranges. So the first one would be close combat. The second one would be it's you know one hex away, two hex away, three hex away, and then four hex away. Each number inside that hex is how many... Um, uh, points on the die it takes to hit. Like the number here is a three, so that would be the roll three or less you'd have to get to hit that that item. And here is how many dice. And the next column you'd look at is what vehicle you're shooting at, and each one of these columns tells you how many dice you would roll. And it corresponds with how many wounds you take. Up here is the level of wounds. So you can see here based on taking one hit, two hits, or three hits, that's what column you will be in that you can fire at. So if you have no hits at all, you'd shoot at your maximum of nine against an infantry. If you have one damage, you would go to the next column, six. So you'd only roll six dice. And then last but not least, if you had two damage and almost dead, you'd roll three dice. So you can see how that affects your ability to wage war. Now again, on the back is your orders. Very important. The orders, again, you can either, with this piece here, this is a... This would be this, um, this gun right here, anti-aircraft. Right, the anti-aircraft has orders like either deploy, uh, where's its withdraw? Withdraw, which means it would hook up to a truck and be able to move. It can fire. It can also have suppressive fire. We talked about that where that costs more ammo. It can ambush. You can also hide the unit. And then if something comes along, actually it would pop out and it would be able to shoot. It's hidden, in other words. Um, then you have defensive fire. All right. And then you have also um, loading ammo, you know, getting more ammo in case it runs out. So just to kind of show you, this is the heart of the game. So just kind of giving you a brief overview so you're not lost. I'm sure you're lost anyway. But <laughs> the bottom line is with this type of game, the orders mean a lot. So now to go on, this is turn one of the scenario we're involved in is called um, Bridge on the River Bug. This is Bug River. Okay. Nice uh, creative name. Bridge on the river, on the river bug. Basically, like I said, it's, it's the Germans going in to capture this river from the Russians and control the area behind it, behind the bridge. So they have to do that for a certain number of turns. Here's the bridge. What Charles has done is he was able to set up his configuration within a certain area right here in the beginning of the game. Now, basically, he's put these, and also you can set up uh, mobile terrain if you want to call it. He's put trenches here. He could have also put barbed wire if he would have liked. He could have, uh, there's mines in the game. He also set up a bunker here. In this bunker is a, is a machine gun. Here's the machine gun. When you have a unit inside a bunker, you take the unit off the board, 
put it with its card, and you mark the flag of the unit on the bunker. So now you know number six, because it's on this flag of the bunker, is now in this bunker. That unit is in this bunker. So that kind of keeps track of everything. And that's the other thing, these flags on each unit, obviously very important, because the number on the flag corresponds to the number on the card. This is how we keep track of the units, because sometimes you have duplicate infantry units. How would you know what they are? So that's important also. Um, so in this case, we've both done our order phase. So the first thing you do in this game, and I'll go over it, is the execution phase is as follows. You have a, a bunch of different orders you have to follow exactly to the T, because there's, there's, there's an order you have to follow as far as that goes. So when we first start, we flip over our cards and we'd say, all right, who has a defend order? And that's what we're going to check right now. So Charles, if you want to start this, and we'll give everybody an overview of how the game goes. All right, so in this order phase, I would flip over the cards to the order side. As you can see here, I've already written the orders of what I'm going to do. All the most, most of what you do in the beginning is move around. So as you can see, I've checked the move box for um, this unit, and then you have to mark in the hex it starts. Plus, when you move normally, you get to move two hexes, so you'd write the two hexes you're moving to. And you have to be exact in your orders because if they're wrong, you can't move that unit. So the orders really have to be done correctly or as far as, follows, as, far as that goes, you would then not be able to move the unit. It would be mis misinterpreted orders is what they call it. All right. So there you go. All right, Charles, what do you got? Okay, my machine gun's not going to do anything. I'm going to conserve some ammo here. All right, so do we have any defense? First thing we're doing is defense. Anybody have a defend order? Well, uh, no. No. Just, uh, that's right. I'm sorry. Right. So we no, So the first thing we're doing okay. is we're going through the sequence right. of play. No defend order. So we go to the next thing, which would be suppression fire. Anybody have suppressive fire? No suppressive. I know I don't. Nope. Right. So nobody has orders for suppressive fire. You would then go to open fire. Anybody taking a shot? Just regular open fire? Nope. Yeah. See, it's the first turn. Really, on this type, you're just maneuvering in the position, usually trying to stay out of the way. Um, next thing you do is any fortitude tests. Fortitude tests are basically morale checks. In this case, there's really no reason to do morale checks. Nobody's gotten fired upon. Nothing has happened. So we go on to the next thing, which would be air missions. We don't have any airplanes in this, so that doesn't apply. Yes, there are air, airplanes in this. Awesome. That's all I can say. They look good, too. Uh, and they do look good. i got to show you them before we close up. And then order. Then we have assault. Next one would be an assault. Assault is basically when you're moving into the same hex as another unit. That's close combat. They call that assault. You have to do that first before you can do your close combat. In this case, there's none of that going on. And then the next thing would be another fortitude test, and then you're to ambush. Anybody doing an ambush order? Ambush going into hidden. Okay. Right? That's correct. You, let me see the order on, on him. Let me okay. see your orders. You never yep. flipped your cards. All right, so Charles, he flipped his card here. On here, he has ambush checked. And I don't know why that's... What is that? Uh, that was the, the range five we were talking about. Oh, oh, range I apologize. Range. So, so he's, he's basically checked this, all right? It's going into ambush, and he's put where he's at, which is 276, and he's putting down where is he facing while he's in that ambush, because you've got to face, you have to have a zone to, to line your gun up where you're going to fire to, and the zone kind of fans out, and he's pointing his gun towards hex 280. So it'll fan out from there. So now what happens, since he's in ambush, he can stay in ambush as long as he wants or until he gets found. And now he will take this off the board. Card goes over here. Piece goes on top. Now he's off the board. Now, you might say, well, gee, I, 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 I see the guy, I know where he is. Well, yeah, think about that two or three turns from now yeah. when everything's going on. If you still remember, that guy might be on 276 because he doesn't have to reveal now any more information. He just took him off the board. It's a done deal. All he has to do now is on the front of the card, remember we talked about the stats on the front, there is a spot where it shows an ambush symbol. All he has to do is check that symbol on the front, and I look over and I go, why is that card? Ah, That's he's in ambush. But I don't know where, or unless I remember, yes, he's there. But believe me, we played this game the last time. I forgot where the guy was. I wasn't sure exactly what hex it was. I got lit up. Okay. Next one you got, Charles. Let's see another order. You don't have any more in... Well, I should ask. You don't have any more ambush? No, no more All ambush. Right. So after the ambush orders are complete, we go to what they call special orders. There's nobody doing anything special right now. That's like building... Yes, you can build bridges in this game. You can lay mines. It's really got some awesome stuff. You can smoke screens. 
Um, it, it just has some really, really neat, neat items, and that's really why these order cards are so cool, and the units feel so individualized. Like, infantry is different from engineering units, and engineer units are different from that anti-tank gun, and just nice, nice feel to, uh, to the individuality of the unit. Um, then we go on, and we have what's called the move phase. Pretty simple. I know everybody's going to be moving, so it, everything is happening simultaneous is according to the execution of the phases. All right, so now we both move together. So, Charles, if you want to get your guys and move them. Does deploy happen the same thing as, fit, uh, as uh, movement? Well, you're not. Remember, you already withdrawn. Right. So he can move. Okay. So what happens is, in this case, he. I didn't see your cards. You want to flip all those over. Yep. He's got orders that we want to see. We want to make sure that we're both doing the right things because if he did something wrong, he can't move them. Um, in his case of his mortar unit, he was already... Oh, you deployed? Okay. Yep. In the case of his mortar unit, this guy was what's called in withdraw mode, which means he had packed up his mortars and they were engaged in moving. Well, all he did was basically go from being deployed, excuse withdrawn. me, being withdrawn. withdrawn to now deploying. And they marked that off here. Deployed. And deploy is the actual symbol with the two legs out on the, uh, on the gun. If you just see one single leg not both of them out, that means he's withdrawn. He's hooked up or he can be moved. So he wanted to go ahead and deploy. He got the legs out on his, or in this case, his mortar back down on the ground and he put the hex where he wanted to deploy to. Yeah. And that means wherever he was standing, it could be any of the adjacent hex around it or in the, in the hex he was in. In this case, he wanted to be in one of the adjacent hexes, which is where he deployed, right here. Yeah. And he marked it off correctly, 134 is the hex. He's good to go, now he's deployed. And does it take a turn to do that? Yes, it does. And there's also little boxes as you, and I don't want to explain the entire game, you need really need to play it, but you can see there's tiny little boxes here in these symbols, and that just tells you how long it takes to do that so one specific box, item. One box is, is a one turn. turn. Right. Yeah. So in this case, you couldn't fire this turn. You can deploy, you wait one turn, next turn you're ready to fire. Okay. Second movement? Second movement. Yep, you're good. One, two. All right, so he did that. He's got it written correctly. Started at 109, 138, boom, 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 he's done. Move. Yep. So, so your move is done. You didn't have to mark the front on that. Okay. One, two. Yep. Guy's moved. I'm going to do the same. My guy is marked with an order here. Now, there's an interesting thing that I did. You'll see there's a flag here. This flag denotes a total of three units in the group. What I did is instead of having three units sitting there in a group and kind of clogging up that hex, you, what you can do is you can grab one of these other cards. You can grab one of these other cards, as you can see. And basically it's called a group card and you write the flags of each unit that's in that group on that card and then write the flag number. Write the flag number you've written on here on the card and you know what you got. So basically I started out from this hex, moved one, two. All three of those units legally moved. You just got to make sure you mark the movements on the individual cards as well. You don't mark it on the group card. You have to do it individually. But they all move together. They're right there. Now... My last unit here, one, eight, two, where my thumb, he had to stop, and he wanted to go further, but he could not, because going through heavy woods, you can only move one hex at a time, so he could not do anything, as a matter the, of fact. The HQ done. is always concealed, right? Is that something? Well, he starts concealed, um, okay. right, he starts, at an HQ, which is what this is, a headquarters unit, starts the game concealed. Um, if during the game he gets found, he can get found two ways, reconnaissance of airplanes and also having a unit find him in close combat. But he can always go back to being concealed again later. So, uh, But right now my unit is concealed. That's how it started the game. Um, and then this unit here, number five, he's going to go ahead and move. 184 and 198. He had to stop anyway. He's in the hoods. That's basically the first turn. All the orders together, really not too exciting yet, obviously it's first turn, we're just moving around. As things progress, it starts to get really hairy, I mean, you're looking for, and there's lines of sight in the game, you're looking for, you know, tracks where you have lines of sight on a guy, um, you're looking for people who are trying to maneuver flank, there are flanking, frontal, and rear assault to your unit, absolutely. Um, there's cool, I mean, I could show you all the pieces. There's tanks in the game. They, they roughly range from the German Panzer II right up to the Panzer IV at this point. Um, they have T-34s, KV-1s, you know, T-26s. I mean, really a nice range of units. I mean, the game's supposed to have an expansion. Well, it is going to have an expansion. Uh, it's called the Battle of Danube with the, Roman, uh, the Romanians against the Russians. That's going to be coming out sometime in April or May. Really, I have to tell you, um, 
I really, really liked the game. And, you know, I know Charles, he had, had Tide of Iron and had played it. And there might be some comparisons to it, but Charles now has played this and as well as Tide of Iron. And he said that this game is nothing like Tide of Iron. It's, it's quite different, except it has miniatures, I guess, Charles. Yeah. Would yeah. you say? It's a lot deeper. There's a lot more actions. Each, in Tide of Iron, there's only, uh, you know, specific, maybe three types of tanks. And, you know, there are some specialized uh, things that happen in the game, but this has a lot deeper. Uh, I like the simultaneous movement factor. Um, I like, you know, like, especially in this scenario, there's uh, engineers. You know, he can only come across this bridge. Uh, last time I had some barbed bar set up here to slow him down, um, but it stopped me from going across too, which I wanted to find his HQ and run across. This time I kept myself from being blocked in by my own barbed bar. He's scooting around here this way, and he's going to try to get over here to plant a uh, start a pontoon bridge, which will take him four check marks or four turns on the back. Like of we card. said, those little tiny squares in the orders. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but there's a lot going on, and uh, it seems like a lot of fun so far, so... And yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Try We're having a good time, that's all. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, there's a lot of expandability. You can see that, um, you know, it's a shame that the, the, the company, um, unfortunately, Vesda is a model-building company. That's what they do. They, they, they have models that they design and, and people buy and build, and that's where they came from. But somehow, at one point, I think a magazine or somebody got a hold of the game and came up with a rule set and this board configuration to to design a game like out of these models. And actually it was genius because the, the simultaneous actions, the way the movement sequence goes, the way I should say the order sequence goes, is really well designed. And there's overlays on the board. I mean, plenty of, there, it comes with terrain tiles that you can change the actual configuration of the board to change the terrain. I mean, there's there's some real cool stuff like, I, I don't want to get them out now, but there's some actual um, um, terrain that builds up to show an elevation yeah, the that the hills or mountains, so you'll have one block, two blocks, or three blocks. Kind of like HeroScape, I guess, yeah. what's it called? Kind of yeah. like that, right? Where, where it has so, yeah. different si height terrains. So that's really cool. And then you kind of pop these on top of that, so you see the terrain on top of the elevation. You know, stuff like that. I mean, just really cool things like that. I mean, a new, the new expansion is coming with trains yeah. and boats, yeah. like little, little, little uh, what do they call them, fire boats. Um, you know, just, just kind of neat things like that. So anyway. And there are individual expanded units you can buy separately. Oh, yeah. Um, Plenty. I didn't bring mine, but uh, the one I want is the rocket launcher. The Katusha. Yeah, the Katusha. And also the Nubal Warfare is supposed to be coming. We're, we're hoping that Nubal Warfare comes out Nubal soon. And, and there's some, there's, um, you know, just real quick. I mean, they have, uh, you know, like I said, we want to show you the planes. I mean, this is the Russian, uh, oh my God, what is this? Stormovic? Stormovic, I think. Yeah. This is their fighter. Um, what I really like is the Shuka. You know, it'd be great if it had a siren. <laughs> but it doesn't, but that's cool. I mean, hey, hey we don't need one. We got you. <laughs> I know. Corny. But anyway, really, I mean, just this is kind of neat um, that it comes with planes. Um, you know, like I said, it has some cool tanks. I might as well show you those while we're here. I mean, this is a uh, kind of cool. This is the Panzer, Panzer III. That it came with. Yeah, and there's light, medium, and heavy tanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then this one I recently got. This model did not come with the original game, but uh, my boy, my son, got me this um, with the MG42 right on the top of the, uh, the half track. You spent four bucks for you on your birthday, huh? Yeah, you know what? And I'll tell you, that's as much as you're going to pay for these models. Four bucks. And we they are simple it. to put together. Most of the uh, time. Yeah. Most. This one's going to be a little tougher for me. That one is a bear. The supply trucks were a little tough for me. Yeah, but, that's uh, a bear. But, I mean, here's a, here's a Russian T-34. I think this that, is, that's pretty cool. This the is the first collectible where I haven't been mad when I buy it. I have to spend five or, five or ten bucks or fifteen bucks for a starter set and get stuck with a bunch of commons and some rares and stuff. I really yeah. dislike that mechanic. But the axis, you mean axes and allies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the kind of thing I... Um, so, I mean, just, just giving you guys uh, a brief kind of overview, showing you how kind of played a little bit in one turn. Um, there's a lot of go there's you know what it's simple but it's 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 strategy is not I mean there's a lot of meat in this game it feels more like squad leader to me with miniatures um, and that's because of these order cards the way it's played out so and it's neat it's not the way Tide of Iron plays out which it's okay you do three things I do three things as Charles was telling me yeah. this is get your orders all right let's go yeah and things just keep on happening all at the same time so that's kind of cool. Um, and I like the fact so. that if you make a mistake, you don't get to do anything. And, you know, kind of 
puts the pressure on you to make the right choice, and and you learn the game as you go. You know, if somebody gives you a wrong order to orders you to fire before you have ammo. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, you are. You're, you're absolutely right. There's not much yeah. recourse in that one until next turn, and hopefully you'll still be alive. Yeah. But the neat thing is, <laughs> the damage um, in this game is very interesting because, and I'll just go over that briefly. Every every unit has a, you know a little defense on, it, and they could be a one or a two if you're armor, but most of the infantry are one, and that means that when you take a shot. The first shot hits your defense, and then that goes to zero. After that, then it starts to hit you individually, and you take wounds. So in this case, this infantry division has five hits it can take before it dies. So actually, it would be six, because one comes off your defense, that goes to a zero, and then it comes off of you. Now, the interesting is... And then oh, one thing, if he did uh, do an order like an ambush, it gives him a plus one to this. Right. So he gets one plus one, and they start... That, that, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, because yeah. that's absolutely right in an ambush. Or, if, let's say, you picked the defensive order. Let's say you didn't want to do anything that, that turn except defense. Well, that's defense. So if you checked off defense, and you put down your range, and that's what that bigger box is for in that order box, you put down how far you want to look out, and how far... Now, obviously, I always put max range. And then it has a plus one to your defense for the little helmet. So again, there's some options you can do to help pump yourself up for that turn. It's not that easy just to kill your guy in one turn. Like some games, like that's why I didn't like Axis Not Life because you can kill somebody like that. You just walk up, get a great couple of die rolls, yeah. and the guy's done. This game, it's not. It's a little more more realistic in that sense. And uh, you know, and the and, and the other thing is terrain comes into play. You can get some extras for terrain to help you also in your defense. Blocks line of sight. Um, just, just I tell you what, just a really, really well done game, and I'm sorry that Vesda, again, hasn't given it more love. I think they should, and get the get the people get going on this and start buying more because the more people buy, the more expansions I'll make, and the more fun I'll have buying them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that that's it, and just wanted to let you guys know. Thanks for watching, and uh, buy the game. It's awesome.